Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Monday, January the 4th, 2021, the 20th of Tevet, 5781. Hope you are well, hope you are safe in your part of the world. This is our first show here for the uh, the new year, the 2021 year. Uh, hope you had a good holiday weekend for those who celebrate the new year. Hope you're safe, hope you're doing well. Don't forget, you can always get in touch with me during the week, Josh at thelandofisrael.com on Facebook, Joshua Haston, or Josh Haston, Israel Advocacy and Journalism on Twitter, at Josh Haston, and on Instagram as well. The last several shows, uh, we have been doing exclusively news, all the latest from Israel, and uh, I really thought this was an important opportunity to focus on a different aspect of our coronavirus, COVID-19 reality here in the world. It's perhaps affecting a lot, a lot of people around the world here in Israel and around the world, and that is mental health. Uh, Mental distress, if you are unaware, is the number one health issue in the world these days. In Israel, by the way, I don't, this is astounding. This is horrible. There is a teen suicide once every three days in Israel. And the statistics that I'm giving you now, I didn't come up with uh, with them on my own. I got them from my good friend, Arnie Drayman. He is a consultant for a company called Mood Night. And they're at the forefront of trying to help people with potentially uh, disastrous uh, mental health, especially now, especially relevant now during coronavirus Moon Knight's mission is to provide society the tools needed to make the the next leap in mental health care for young people. They have developed a software platform that can detect mental, this is unbelievable, mental distress online in real time from texts, posts, emojis, chat box. Their artificial intelligence program has been proven to be 92% accurate, um, similar to what humans can do. So without further ado, my good friend, Arnie Drayman, a consultant for Mood Night. Thanks for joining me today, Arnie. Thank you, Josh. It's a uh, very disturbing statistic that you had mentioned early on, and mental distress has been indeed uh, on the rise, particularly during the last uh, nine to 10 months of COVID uh, around the world. The World Health Organization has put mental distress as the number one uh, a health issue uh, above anything, you know, cancer, heart disease, all the, what we would call regular killers. Uh, mental health has certainly uh, just grown and it uh, needs to be dealt with in some fashion. So the company you represent, Mood Night, they have seemed to find some type of methodology uh, using people's online behavior in order to assist those, it looks like uh, particularly children, perhaps you can expand and talk about uh, if it affects uh, or it can have an impact on adults as well. They're able to understand based on what you do online if you are in need of help. I mean, this is revolutionary. Go ahead and describe that. Correct. First of all, so it's great to have a uh, Israeli startup, in an early stage startup, uh, part of the great uh, Israeli high tech scene. This is in social tech, it's called, uh, where it's high tech used for the benefits of society. Uh, the software has been running live for two years already. It's not just a theory from some PhD in a university somewhere that it could work, but it's actually been uh, proven. The uh, founder, Hava Doron Soferman, she has almost 20 years now, been running a website called Four Girls, the number four, Four Girls. And it's really a forum for uh, teenage and young adolescent uh, women here in Israel. It's very popular. Tens of thousands of girls interact all the time. And she noticed a few years ago that there was already a sharp increase in mental distress online and took Uh, the steps necessary to try to create some kind of technological solution to detecting that mental distress online and then being able to do something once you've detected. So uh, the software has been developed. It uses artificial intelligence and machine 
learning and what they call NLP, natural language processing. It uh, works in tandem with uh, medical professionals, mental health professionals, so that psychologists and social workers and others are involved to keep the artificial intelligence, let's say, in line. Because uh, humans can only do so much and machines can only do so much. But together, they can achieve this 92% success rate, as you, as you mentioned, of detecting uh, mental distress online and then alerting. You know, First, they, what they do is they categorize it. It could be a high risk, medium risk, or a low risk. High risk goes immediately to uh, the emergency authorities, the police, the helplines, uh, whatever nonprofit might be in the area to work with a person. Uh, I'll just take an aside at the moment, a person, because it, it doesn't have to be just children or teens or adolescents or young people. It could be anybody. And it could be not just mental distress as it relates to suicide. It could be any kind of mental distress. It could be drug and alcohol addiction. It could be, the, the software is pliable so that it, uh, it can be taught any set of keywords over the course of time and then improved upon so that it can actually detect whatever you would be looking for. So I want to understand how it works. So in order for uh, Moon Knight software uh, to have the ability to see what's going on online, so an organization or a company would need to install, install the software into their system, and then it would have the opportunity then to monitor people's behaviors? Or is this where are we talking about, you know, are they able to just detect uh, automatically somebody on Facebook who is uh, experiencing uh, mental health issues. I mean, how are they able to, to you know, be effective uh, in reaching those uh, in need? Excellent question. So the uh, software comes with what you would call a dashboard so that it does fit into the platform. Uh, it could be a website, it could be a social, some sort of social interaction site, it could be an application, an app of some sort, and then what people are posting is public information, right? We're not talking about anybody's privacy here. It's all public, it's all things they post, like you know, take Facebook as an example, take any of the, like Reddit or any of the other sites, it's all public information. If they, if they, they Facebook or Reddit or any particular platform chose to in, use this software to monitor their posts, they would get alert on a dashboard. Again, defining them as either high, medium or low. And depending on what, you know, like I said, the high risk of emergency services immediately, the medium risk would wind up uh, with mental health professionals. And low risk was one of the great things that Moon Knight has done. They've been training teenagers to do peer-to-peer -peer, uh, counseling work online with other teens. So that on a low risk assessment, it's certainly, uh, and there's proven models for this, uh, to use the peer-to-peer Project. So they've done it in uh, Batyam with the municipality there last year. They uh, are now looking to do a project together with the organization, the umbrella organization of youth groups here in Israel, uh, for Bnei Akiva and Sofim and, and all the other youth groups that they have here, the scouts, uh, so that they could do a joint project and really create a, a massive amount of uh, online uh, positivity, right? getting teens to be able to react to other teens and catch the issue early. Because we know that mental distress, like many other you know, physical ailments, if you catch it early enough, it doesn't tumble into something worse. It doesn't become those high risk categories. It stays low risk and can be dealt with and it can be improved upon. I mean, this is, this is so very important. I mean, we, we hear so many horror stories of uh, particular teens who experience some degree of shame uh, on social media or are being bullied on social media and then right. go to the extreme, whether it's, you know, uh, God forbid suicide or trying to harm themselves or whatnot. I mean, this, this sounds like something so revolutionary that this should be part of, you know, any type of interface all over the world in order to, you know, social media can be so positive, but on the other hand, it can cause so much damage, especially for the young, uh, the young people out there. I mean, this sounds, this Israeli technology sounds like it should be really, you know, interfaced throughout the world. I mean, how far along uh, are, uh, are you? Is the company at this point 
in terms of uh, distributing its technology to you know all the various channels uh, around the world really so uh, it uh, thankfully over the last two years they've uh, had grants from the Rashut uh, the the Israel Innovation Authority from Digital Israel and they were chosen as part of the Microsoft's uh, AI for Good program. So they, they've been getting some uh, push to make the technology say, more public, more uh, available, right? But they're still, as I mentioned, it's an early startup. Uh, they have a grant now for 700,000 shekels, about $200,000, a little bit less than $200,000, uh, but they need a matching grant in order to get it. Uh, the online help, uh, digital health uh, uh, ecosystem, as they call it, is growing, right? We all know just in, in the last nine months with COVID, t telehealth, uh, you, you've all of a sudden been able to speak to a doctor and get information and get prescriptions and get all kinds of things done online that a year ago was pretty much impossible. <laughs> um, and so that whole field of uh, online uh, health services is growing. And so they're really positioned in a good place in order to uh, branch out and make the market grow. This project that I mentioned, the peer-to-peer uh, -peer project with the youth group, would be a great example of combining philanthropy, right? If a, if, if a philanthropist wanted to sponsor, let's say, this technology and program the project for a particular youth group, say for all of the Israeli scouts, mm -hmm. just think of the amazing good that could be done to have it run. Uh, and of course, uh, Moon Knight is looking at, you know, as a business, not just as a philanthropy, uh, for investors, and they're looking to expand into Europe. They've already had two inquiries from uh, major health organizations in Europe and uh, to expand in the United States as well. Again, language is not an issue. It's the first one ever to be done in uh, Hebrew. They can easily expand uh, to English and French, Spanish, et cetera. So what do we need to do, Arnie? How can we get uh, Moon Knight the funds that they need in order to make it happen, get that matching grant? What's the best way to get in touch with you? What's the best way to get in touch with the company? Right. Let's, uh, let's give them a push. Let's get them what they need in order to help uh, teens out there, young people, especially during this coronavirus. I know, thank God, we have the vaccines coming out, but uh, I was just talking about it with somebody this morning. Uh, this is a critical, critical period. And, uh, people, unfortunately, seem to be lax because they see that the vaccines have come out. I mean, we really need to stay strong, whether it's, you yeah. know, following the restrictions uh, or, you know, keeping our mental health in check during these uh, critical times before the vaccine kicks in. Arnie, how can we get in touch with you? How can people reach you? How can people reach the company? Maybe there's somebody out there listening right now uh, who, wants to, who wants to help. Terrific. So uh, Mood Night is spelled M-O-O-D, Mood, then Night, like K-N-I-G-H-T, and the teens are called Teen Knights, and their job is to go out and be the white knights in shining armor to really help save others, save lives. We know that it works. Uh, we see that it works. Uh, it's been proven that uh, the one in Batyam, 25 uh, girls were trained, and imagine they reached over 10,000 other teams wow. well, just over the over a period of a summer. You can, it, 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 right? It, it's crazy. So Mood Knight, M-O-O-D-K-N-I-G-H-D, moodnight.com is their website. The information is there. Uh, you can reach me, Arnie. Uh, what's the best way? Uh, my last name is Draymond, D-R-A-I-M-A-N. So my email address is A J. Draymond at gmail.com. Uh, they can reach through you. You know how to reach me easily. And I'm more than happy to discuss the project further, uh, either the philanthropic side of it, and it can be expanded not just youth organizations and not just youth organizations in Israel, but really uh, anywhere, uh, or investors in the, uh, in the great big world of high tech, is Israeli high tech and innovation, what it's, what it's all about. So if anybody didn't get, did not catch that, did not get the information, get in touch with me. I'm happy to put you in touch with Arnie Draymond, consultant for Mood Night, doing holy work, especially now during these troubling and trying times. I want to thank you for your time today. Thank Yishikoch, you, Yishikoch, as they say. Keep it up. Keep up your holy thank work. You. Help, helping people.
out there during the pandemic and beyond. Um, we are going to take a short break right now. Come back with all the latest news from Israel. It was great to speak to Arnie this morning uh, and do an interview. It's been a while since we've had anybody on the show. My name is Josh Haston. This is Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Monday, January the 4th, 2021. We are under lockdown here in Israel. Despite the lockdown, I am here in Jerusalem outside the walls of the old city. We're going to take a short break, come back with part two of the show. If you missed any of this segment with Arnie Draymond, of course, it'll be posted later on all of the social media networks. Short break, and then we'll be back with part two. So don't go anywhere. 